Okay, this video is about getting started with the tuning process in FastWorks. First, we'll open up our FastWorks software. We're working on a 2005 T4 base car today. First step is always just to open up the file that we want to be working on. In my case, I've got several of them to look at, but 310. This is our BOTUS, B-O-E, and my development tune here. As we go through here, you can always see the file name that you're working on up here. Uh, this is the calibration ID, FastWorks 2005 version 01. Uh, the main thing that people will probably want to modify uh, based on their current setup is oftentimes around fuel delivery. If you expand the fuel, there is the fuel target AFR. This is generally set pretty well from uh, your base cal. You've got your engine load numbers over here and your engine RPM. Notice that this doesn't go all the way to redline nor does it go to the uh, complete engine load number that is achievable, which is 255. The reason for that is, is because it just simply carries on the last number that is referenced. And typically once you're at 216, that's full boost in most boosted cars. These AFR numbers are fine. If you don't like them, you can change them. And again, this is the target AFR that is that the ECU is trying to achieve. This 14.6 must be set for closed loop operation. There's a number other than 14.6 here. It will not run closed loop in these cells. Please note that check engine lights regarding lean or rich check engine uh, codes are only ever triggered in these closed loop operating cells. That's between, in this particular map, 1500 and call it 5500 RPMs in this very low load range of 88 and all the way up to some of these higher load ranges of 112, but nevertheless, it's never down in these high boosted areas or high horsepower ranges. As you close this, you can look at your volumetric efficiency. This is where the fuel maps are actually set. Supercharged cars will, or turbocharged cars will usually have load ranges down in these 216 to 255 ranges at wide open throttle, usually by about 3000 RPMs or so. Normally aspirated cars will be in this 125 to 176 or 162 range. So if you're trying to tune wide open throttle uh, AFRs, then at least for supercharged cars, you'll be down in this range that you see circled here. These numbers, simply think of them as a relative point. A larger number is more fuel, a smaller number is less fuel. There's on the T4, there's only one fuel map to look at. So again, if you wanna make changes here, you can either highlight one cell and change it with this plus five, plus one, minus one, or minus five, or you can right click on it, as I just did here, you can adjust the value by small or increase, uh, small or large uh, increase or decrease, or you can just type in a number by a percentage. An offset simply means do I want it to increase by two, you could do that, or you could actually set the value. Um, so if you wanted it to 130, you could write in 130 right here and hit apply. If you want to change several areas, you can highlight a large area. And again, right click, you could either change them all by five, like I just did, or one, like I hit, did here. Or you can again, right click and do the same percentage thing. If you make a change in one area, you want to smooth out that change, you'd highlight the change to then interpolate. You can interpolate horizontally or vertically, and that simply takes the difference between say 137 and 150 and gives you a nice smooth transition. So if I interpolate vertically, it'll change this 137 to 150, and I'll do that for all these cells, 141 to 146, and has an even distribution between those two cells. The other common place that people want to look at is mass airflow. This is the actual mass airflow scalers. This particular map is set for a stock 2.55 inch uh, mass airflow ID. If you change it to three inch, this is where you would change that particular offset. And that provides for the correct tip in, uh, wide open throttle, uh, idle, etc. Everything in the fuel range will then be correct um, if you have the mass airflow table calibrated correctly to the mass airflow sensor that you have. In the ignition section, the T4 has one ignition timing map uh, for regardless of which cam you're on. And then this knock timing map uh, references the timing that it will go to for max knock retard. Uh, make sure that your knock timing map always has values in it smaller than your ignition timing map. Go to your ignition timing map. And this is generally how they're gonna look. The car tends to idle around 50 on the load range, 38 to 50 at about a thousand RPMs. And then, again, supercharged cars, you'll tune wide open throttle down in here. 
And then in this range here is generally where ping can be kind of difficult to tune out, but nevertheless, this particular map is just a simple base cal. I wouldn't put too much stock in what you see here. It's not really refined tuned by any means. On the modifiers, you can change the IET timing. These are particular temperatures, and then again, don't put too much credit in this, but at this particular map, you can see that the ECU is pulling timing at this rate on this uh, particular car. This car does not have an IET sensor other than what's in the mass airflow sensor. So for supercharged cars with an IET sensor, uh, post uh, rotors or in the manifold itself or past the intercooler, uh, these values will obviously be totally different as they may be in your particular map regardless. There are knock sensitivity tables. We'll get into that right now. They're very difficult to tune um, and generally they'll be okay in your base cal. VVT settings. You can see when the, this particular map turns the VVT on at 5,000 RPMs on the way up, it disables the VVT or goes onto the small cam at 4,800 RPMs. These are the temperature for VVT. Um, there are then two timing maps for VVT. Small numbers are less advanced. Large numbers are more advanced. Generally, it's going to idle somewhere down here uh, in low numbers, and then at wide open throttle might be at high numbers. Again, don't pay any attention to these particular numbers. They're just random numbers that are set there. Trouble codes. The 013X are for your catalyst. Um, bottom line is these trouble codes for your pre-cat, generally you want those checked. If you're not running a catalyst, then you'll uncheck these 137s and so on. Uh, when you come down to trouble codes, uh, down here as well, you'll turn off your post cat heaters, which are right here, and you can leave the rest checked. This limp home mode RPM reduction is handy uh, because this is if there's a problem on a race car, you may set this to zero, simply meaning that if the car goes into limp home mode, it won't reduce the RPM limit. Generally, this is set from the factory at 2000 RPMs. Uh, in case there's a significant problem with the car, it'll at least get you to the dealership, so to speak. Uh, for most maps, this is left at 2,000, but again, race cars, you may want to make this zero so that you can finish the race and diagnose the problem later. As far as RPM limits, it was down here in the limit section. You can go to rev limit by temperature. It's important to expand this map. Anytime you see this plus, mine, plus sign up here, it means that the map has room to expand. You can expand this map, and it's important that on this temperature range, everything in the 70 degree range, which is at, uh, when the ECU has it programmed to be at uh, full operating temperature, that all these values are the same. If one of these values uh, is at a different number than the other, it will default to the lowest number. So if you want it to be at 8500, it, all these values need to be 8500. If you want it to change to say 8000, I hit right click, control J, right here, 8000. 8,000 RPM. Change all these. You'll notice if you reduce the map, all those will be at 8,000. I don't want this to be at uh, 8,000, however. So I'm going to highlight all these. Control J. I'm going to move this back to 8,500. This 6,000 is for your cold warm up RPM rev limiter of 6,000 RPMs. You can even go down here to features and you can look at your um, rev limiter uh, when it shows your shift light. These are the shift light rev limiters so that basically what it's simply saying is that while the rev limiter might be at 8500, it will shine the shift light at 1100 RPMs before the rev limit in first, 850 in second, 550 in third. And so this is kind of nice where you can tune your actual shift light. Pretty cool feature. Once you've made all the changes that you want to do, simply go up to File and Save As. You'll save as to whatever file name you want it to be. So uh, if, if you don't mind writing over your old map, then just hit File Save. But if you want to save it as something new because it's something you want to try and upload, that's perfectly fine. Nevertheless, I'm not going to make any changes to this particular map for this particular illustration. But after you save them, whatever map is showing up here, is the map that's going to get uploaded into the ECU. 